Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above, ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy. The attributes of Jesus, the work and ministry of Christ, the passion of Jesus, on the cross, it is finished. In this Lent season, let's take some time together to journey through a five-week devotional at 10pm weeknights for 10 minutes as we reflect on the life of Jesus, our Overcomer. You're also invited to join us for our Tuesday night prayer altars from 8.30 to 9.30pm on Zoom as we look to Jesus and remember His work on the cross throughout this Lent period. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Come on, church! Praise God, Amen. Praise God, bless your name. Come on, church, are you ready to praise Him today? Come on, hey. Come on, put your hands like this. Come on, hey. I want to give you one new teaser And hold nothing in reason No matter, no matter how I'm feeling I still believe it's one new teaser Oh, my praise, oh, my praise Oh, belongs to you, belongs to you Oh, my praise belongs to you Amen. Belongs to you. Come on, church, are you ready? Let's shout it out. Shout it to the world. You're the greatest. Sing it till it's heard. You're the greatest. It's what you deserve. You're the greatest. Jesus, I will lift your name. I'm I. Oh, Jesus. Come on. Want to give you what you deserve. Hold nothing in reason No matter what, no matter how I'm feeling I still believe it's what you deserve Come on, all my praise, all my praise Oh, belongs to you All my praise belongs to you All my praise, amen Belongs to you Come on, church, are you ready? Oh, shout it to the attributes of Jesus, the work and ministry of Christ, the passion of Jesus, on the cross, it is finished. In this Lent season, let's take some time together to journey through a five-week devotional at 10pm weeknights for 10 minutes as we reflect on the life of Jesus, our Overcomer. You're also invited to join us for our Tuesday night prayer altars from 8.30 to 9.30pm on Zoom as we look to Jesus and remember His work on the cross throughout this Lent period.
church, wherever you are, we're going to praise his name forever. Amen. Oh, one, two, three, come on. Let everything that has been praised the Lord be worthy to be Everybody shout unto the Lord. Come on, church, you shout. Oh, we lift you higher, sing it wonderful. By your name, Lord. Oh, Jesus. You are here. As we lifting up your name, lifting up your name, you are here. As we're giving, as we're giving you the praise, giving you the praise. The kingdom of God is released in this atmosphere. Where freedom, where freedom and grace. The attributes of Jesus, the work and ministry of Christ, the passion of Jesus, on the cross, it is finished. In this Lent season, let's take some time together to journey through a five-week devotional at 10pm weeknights for 10 minutes as we reflect on the life of Jesus, our Overcomer. You're also invited to join us for our Tuesday night prayer altars from 8.30 to 9.30pm on Zoom as we look to Jesus and remember His work on the cross throughout this Lent period. attributes of Jesus, the work and ministry of Christ, the passion of Jesus, on the cross, 
it is finished. In this Lent season, let's take some time together to journey through a five-week devotional at 10 p.m. weeknights for 10 minutes as we reflect on the life of Jesus, our overcomer. You're also invited to join us for our Tuesday night prayer altars from 8.30 to 9.30 p.m. on Zoom as we look to Jesus and remember His work on the cross throughout this Lent period.
Hello and welcome to SIBKL online service. So good to see so many of you early for service today. I'm Jeffrey and I'm one of the pastors here in SIBKL. It's the last weekend of February and time really flies. And despite whatever lockdown or whatever restrictions that we had uh, over the Chinese New Year celebration, I trust that you have had a great time celebrating Chinese New Year with your family and friends. And even as we enter into March, uh, do share with us what you're doing uh, even in the month of March, be it your ministry or your own life. And you're watching this service live, can you please share by using the chat room uh, where you're tuning in from and we would truly like to connect with you. We are so glad that you are with us. If you remember last weekend, we started on the overview of the book of Revelation. Uh, do type in the chat room as well something that you're looking forward about the study of Revelation. And in a short while, we are going to worship our great God and King. And I believe that God is right here where you are. And God has a table prepared for you. I believe that there will be healing for those who need it there will be hope for those who need it and there will be restoration for those of you who are seeking restoration. So may this sense of the presence of God be in your home. So let's take a few moments now even to pray and to commit this time to God. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you Lord that even uh, despite whatever restrictions that we face uh, even in this COVID-19 situation, we thank you for technology that although we cannot meet physically, O Lord, we are not disconnected from you, we are not disconnected from one another. And even as we join our hearts together and worship you, I pray, O Lord, that it will be a wonderful time that we can spend together worshipping you and sitting at your feet to learn from you, O Lord. So may you truly bless this time together, even as we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So now let's have a look at our SIB KL News. The attributes of Jesus, the work and ministry of Christ, the passion of Jesus, on the cross, it is finished. In this Lent season, let's take some time together to journey through a five-week devotional at 10pm weeknights for 10 minutes as we reflect on the life of Jesus, our Overcomer. You're also invited to join us for our Tuesday night prayer altars from 8.30 to 9.30pm on Zoom as we look to Jesus and remember His work on the cross throughout this Lent period. Hi everyone! Would you like to get to know SIBKL a little bit more? If you've ever had such questions like, how can I join a cell group? How can I serve in a ministry? How can I be discipled? How can I be a member? How can I join one of our SIBKL events? or any other questions, then I invite you to click on the link below and we will connect with each other via WhatsApp. One of our Connect leaders will reach out to you. We would love to connect with you, so we invite you to connect with us. God bless. The El Pito Healing Ministry will be hosting a session titled Look to the Healer and Be Healed. Our speaker, Pastor Gilbert Wee, will be sharing based of Luke chapter 6, verse 19. He is part of the prayer, healing and deliverance ministry and has since been anointed to pray for the sick and those held captive by spiritual darkness. 
We welcome everyone who is looking for healing to join this session and be blessed. More details will be shown on the screen. Want to keep up with your prayer life? Our Saturday morning prayer altar will be starting from 6 March onwards. Starting time and Zoom link will be shown on the screen. So come, join us for a time of intercession and connecting with God. One of the DNAs of SIBKL is to be a generous church. It is now so much easier for you to give. You can give via online banking transfer or do it now transfer. All you need to do is to scan this QR code and it will lead you to our giving page. Come on church, put your hands together if you can. Let's give God the glory today, wherever you're at in your living room. I've come to you with a grateful heart for the things you've done. I've come to you giving all my praise for this day you made. You're amazing. My God, come on, there's no one like you. There's no one like you, none beside you. My God, everywhere I go, everywhere I go, I will lift your name up. In all I do, I will give you praise. Everywhere I go, I will lift your name up. I lift your name up. Lord, to lift you high I come to you Every night and day Lord, to give you praise You're amazing Forever reigning My God There's no one like you None beside you My God When we sing everywhere I go Everywhere I go I will lift your name up In all I do I will give you praise Everywhere I go I will lift your name up I lift your name up
Whatever comes my way Whatever comes my way I will lift you up Giving you my praise I will never stop Your surrounding babe Your love overflows I will lift your name Everywhere I go Come on, we sing everywhere I go And everywhere I go I will lift your name up In all I do I will give you praise Everywhere I go I will lift your name up I lift your name up circumstance let's look at him today yes Lord and no one can move like Jesus does no one can love like Jesus love oh he can change the hardest heart nothing else but Jesus' love No one can say Like Jesus says He is greater than everything I face And I will serve For all my days Nothing else but Jesus I want us to declare this together
Hallelujah. Truly, Jesus, you are Lord over everything. For there is no one else like you. There is no one else who can truly uh, bring forth healing, who can truly comfort us, O Lord. And truly, you are the King of generations. And truly, Jesus, we want to worship you. We want to bless you because there is truly no one who is worthy to be praised. And even in this atmosphere of worship, let us remember those who are in need of a healing touch from our Lord. And right now, even as you're watching from home, can I request you to stretch your hands even towards these names that are listed on screen. We want to remember our sister Yap, uh, who is suffering from the right neck which is swollen. Uh, she's suffering dizziness and chest tightness as well. We pray in Jesus' name uh, that the numbness and pain in her hands and legs will be gone in Jesus' name, Lord, that you bring forth the healing that truly Sister Yap will be healed in Jesus' name. We pray, O Lord, even for Emmanuel uh, and, and Brother Francis, that even for Emmanuel as he's suffering from breathing difficulty, neck pain, stiffness, and, and chest and leg pain, I pray in Jesus' name, O Lord, that you remove the fatigue from him, O Lord. And I pray, O Lord, that you will truly restore a clear vision that even he had uh, this head operation I pray in Jesus' name, Lord, that Emmanuel, that, like even as his name suggests that truly God is with Emmanuel and that he will be healed. And we pray for Brother Francis, that even as he suffered this chest pain, in Jesus' name, that his chest will be clear and strengthened. And for those of us who are tuned in uh, this morning, if you're watching and you need a healing touch from the Lord, I pray in Jesus' name that even as you stretch forth your hand towards the Lord, that healing and breakthrough will come to you, Lord. So Lord Jesus, you see these hands that are lifted up to you, Lord. And I pray that even as they trust you, you will truly bring forth the healing you will bring forth that breakthrough that they are looking for and we pray all this in jesus name and all of god's people say amen and amen church are you ready to hear the word of god i know that you are going to be absolutely blessed by this message so let's hear the sermon right now Hi Church, this week I'm going to share with you the introduction to Jesus' letters to the seven churches in Revelation chapter 2 and 3. But we won't go through each letter, that we'll do next week when we start the first letter, the letter of Jesus to the church at Ephesus. But today, I'm going to give you an overview of Jesus' letters to the seven churches. So, uh, first of all, before that, I want to apologize for last week. I really went over time. I'm so sorry. Uh, uh, but I, I, I just want to give you a good overview. All right. So uh, this week, I promise I will try to stick to the time allotted to me. Let me pray. Father, I want to commit this time to you that even as we look into your word, we pray that you will guide me and give me the ability to communicate it accurately, Lord, so that I don't add or subtract as it is, Father Lord, so that when we start this journey in the study of the book of Revelation, Lord, it is the Spirit of God guiding us step by step, Lord. So thank you, Father. I commit myself to you right now for this uh, uh, weekend. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. So let me read, first of all, uh, the first five verses of Re Revelation chapter 1. So if you have a Bible, I would encourage you to take your Bible, whether electronic or written, and you will benefit more if you follow me. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show his servants what must soon take place. He made it known by sending his angel to his servant John, who testifies to everything he saw, that is, the word of God 
and the testimony of Jesus Christ. Verse 3, Blessed is the one who reads the words of this prophecy. I told you, Revelation, as I said last week, is the only book in the Bible where you will be blessed if you not only read it, but also blessed are you to who hear it and take to heart what is written in it because the time is near. So, we are blessed. So this year, SIBKL, we will be blessed. You agree with me? Say, Amen. Amen. Praise God. Yes. Verse 4, John. To the seven churches in the province of Asia, grace and peace to you from him who is, who was, and who is to come, and from the seven spirits before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, who is a faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, and the ruler of the kings of the earth. To him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood. I told you, this is the greeting of the Godhead. God the Father, God the Son, the seven souls, four spirits of the Holy Spirit, and God and Jesus Christ greets us, peace and grace and peace be unto you. I want to do verse 1 to verse 3 because I've already done that quite extensively last week when I told you that uh, the sequence of revelation is from God the Father to Jesus Christ to the angels to John and guess what? You're absolutely right. Not to anybody but shown specially to his servants. I will pick up from verse 4. John, to the seven churches in the province of Asia. So clearly, the seven churches whom Jesus writes to, remember, is a revelation of Jesus Christ, uh, not revelation of John. Uh. John was only the channel, the conduit, if you like, of the revelation, the apocalypse, the unveiling of the end times to the seven churches and these seven churches actually existed in history and they were in the province of Asia, chapter verse 4. So I show you a map. This Asia is actually the Asia part of Turkey, Asia Minor. And you know that Turkey is the only country, I think, in the world that has part of it in Europe and part of it in Asia, separated by the Bosphorus Straits. I, I don't know about you, but I, I remembered in 2001, uh, Pastor Lichu and I made a trip to Turkey and we really, really enjoyed ourselves. And uh, I, I remember, wow, the, 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 the places that we went to uh, and, um, and, uh, and the museum, in, uh, in, in, in Istanbul was outstanding, plus the market. And I, and I know that some of you have been to a special tour of the seven churches of Asia Minor, of, of, of Revelations. So I, I've not been, I, would, I want to go one day. But you see from the map that actually the seven churches were situated in the Asian side of Turkey. And these are the letters of Jesus to each of this church, Pergamum, Thyatira, Sardis, Laodicea, Philadelphia, Smyrna, and Ephesus. But why? Why did Jesus write these letters to the seven churches? How do we interpret it? So theologically, how do we view these seven churches? So essentially, there are many, many perspectives, but I just want to mention two we can look at these seven churches, letters rather to the seven churches, either from a historicist point of view or from an idealist point of view. The historic view says that we interpret the letters to the seven churches in a sense that each church represents one era of human history of mankind's history. So, the historicist pers perspective is like, like, like this. The first 
church, Ephesus, represents 1st century AD. That's why at the end of the 1st century AD, uh, they lost it. They lost their first love. Okay? And uh, Smyrna was the one that Jesus did not have any bad thing about Smyrna, you see. So, so uh, they belonged to the 2nd, 3rd century church, which was so purified through the persecution. Pergamum represents the time of Constantine, where the church was institutionalized, because that one, hey, that's very bad, Satan now took over the church, so to speak, and Pergamum represents the church during the time of Constantine's rule. Thyatira represents the Middle Ages. The church was so corrupt at the Middle Ages, idolatry and indulgences and, 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 and the, uh, the, the dark ages, so to speak, where the, the, the Bible was not read. All right, the church became uh, adulterated. In Thyatira, we read the Jezebel spirit was there. You went to bed with the prophetess Jezebel, Jesus said. Sardis then represents the 15th century Protestant Reformation. Sardis represents that. Philadelphia represents the mission search or the mission age in the 18th, 19th and early 20th century where people like William Carey, Hudson Taylor, the Mor Mor uh, Moravian Revival, Azusa Street Revival, a tremendous surge of missions from, from, from the West and, and, and Malaysia uh, was a good beneficiary of this mission surge because a lot of schools, mission schools were birthed. And of course, Laodicea represents today, the 20th century church when we are at best lukewarm. So this is a historicist perspective of the interpretation of the seven churches. I belong to the idealist view. I take the idealist view which says that the seven churches does not only apply to this, does not apply to the seven eras of men's history, but actually it applies today. And every one of the message or content of the seven churches, we can apply it today. And in fact, at any one time, you can see elements of the seven churches in the world today. I hold that view, that the letters to the seven churches are very relevant for us today. And that's why we study it. And my prayer is that as we go through the seven churches, one by one every week, we ask this question, can I encourage you? Uh, ask this question. Does it represent my church? If I were to be honest with you and with myself, which of these seven churches do you think S-I-B-K-L is most like? Wow. You know, I'm a doctor. Oh, I was a doctor. You know, when I see a sick patient, I want to diagnose. And not only do I want to diagnose, I want to investigate and I want to prescribe, finally treat, so that the sick patient becomes healthy again. So when you and I are honest with ourselves, and I want you to be honest, SIBKL. We are not perfect. No church is perfect. If you want to look for faults in SIBKL, plenty. La. I will sit you down and let me tell you. Huh? You don't have to second guess one. But the key is this. And I say the same to every church, including your own church, if you're listening from another church. Let's not criticize. Let's not condemn. The key is this. Let's honestly examine and assess our spiritual health like any good doctor will, more importantly is correct it, rectify it, treat it, restore your church, restore SIBKL so that we can be always strong, excellent, strong, strong, excellent, dynamic, absolutely right. 
excellent strong dynamic so that we can continue to influence the nation and impact generations. The key question still remains unanswered, you know. As I look at the review and tell myself, how should I present it to you all? The key question that I keep asking myself that I want to answer now is, why, uh, why is it that Jesus writes these letters to the seven churches situated in this part of the world, uh, well, to be more specific, why this part of the Middle East? Why not uh, other parts of the Middle East? Why not Europe? Why not a other parts of Asia? Why is it that Jesus specifically handpicks the seven churches by name located in this specific area of Turkey. Why? The answer lies in Jesus' letter to the church of, in Pergamum. Revelation chapter 2, verse 12 to verse 13. Jesus says to the church, to the angel of the church in Pergamum, write this down. These are the words of him who has a sharp double-edged sword, i.e. Jesus. Remember, that's how John saw Jesus in Revelation chapter 1, right? In all his glory. So these are the words of the one whom John saw, the judge, the king of kings, who has a sharp double-edged sword in his mouth, which is the word of God. I know where you live, where Satan has his throne. What? Satan? I thought Satan was in heaven. Second heaven. Satan got a throne here. Yes. You know, Satan has, is not omnipresent one. No. It's not omnipotent. In other words, he can only be in one place at one time. He cannot be in many places at the same time. And guess what? He has got a home in the world at that time. And I think even today, you know. So at that time, where, where was Satan's throne room? Where did he reign from? Where did he, where did he do all his mischief and, 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 and does all his, 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 his diabolical uh, uh, schemes and, and, and strategies from? from Pergamum. That is the reason why Jesus now writes a letter to all the seven churches who was under the shadow and the influence of Satan so that they now become a lesson and a prototype to you and to me so that we can understand the Satan's schemes and over. Come, you are right. So the letters to the seven churches is to tell us how we can overcome Satan. I want to ask you an interesting question. Where do you think uh, today uh, as I speak is Satan's throne? Where do you think Satan lives today? I told you he's not omnipresent one. No? Huh? Right in the chat room. Go ahead. Where do you think Satan lives today? Is he still in Turkey? I'm very sure many of you have a very good educated guess. I'll give you a clue. Wherever Satan lives, that place is the most anti-Israel. 
wherever Satan has his throne, that place is the most anti-Christian. Where do you think that place is today? Just to give you another perspective, you know, Pergamum was archaeologically excavated around the maybe the 17th, uh, 19th century. In the beginning of the 20th century, they transported the entire temple of Zeus, which housed Satan's throne at Pergamum through archaeological excavation, stone by stone, transported it, do you know where? Berlin. So at the beginning of the 20th century, and this is the temple of Zeus, today, in the Pergamon Museum in Berlin. Uh, uh, Pastor Dicho and I visited Germany several years ago. Unfortunately, I don't know why we missed this museum. And this is the centerpiece of that museum, Pergamon Museum in Berlin, the Temple of Zeus, where Satan's throne was. And this entire archaeological masterpiece was transported to Berlin at the beginning of the 20th century before World War II. Who was the culprit that started World War II? Hitler. Why do you think he was so anti-Jew? Why do you think he had wrecked so much havoc and destruction, so much so that 60 million people died one-tenth of them were Jews, six million Jews. Why? Because Satan's throne was transported from Pergamum to Berlin. And I got a feeling that Satan entered into Hitler as he did Judas. So the question is, 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 is Satan still in Germany? I don't think so. He's somewhere else. You write your opinion in the chat room. Going back to the seven churches, let me now do an overview or perspective of it in relation to Pergamum. Because that is the reason why Jesus, I feel, wrote the letter to the seven churches in this area because this is Satan's territory, man. This is Satan's throne is there. So Jesus now writes a letter to all the seven churches telling them what to expect, commending them, advising them, and telling them how to overcome. So let me now use this uh, uh, as a premise for my overview of the seven churches. So if you will now look at the map here, you will notice that the two churches that are nearest to Pergamum would be Thyatira and Sardis. The two churches that are furthest to Pergamum would be what? Ephesus and Laodicea. And in between would be Smyrna and Philadelphia. Very interesting. Now look at it. The two churches that are nearest to Pergamum would be the ones that are nearest to Satan. Isn't it so? That is the reason why now you, you keep this map in your mind. Uh, and now let me go to the table. So you find that Thyatira and Sardis, which was nearest to Pergamum, the churches were the most corrupt. They were the most immoral. Sexual immorality, la, Jezebel spirit, la, false teaching, la, name it, they had it. Why? Because they were nearest to satanic influence. They were finished, they were gone. Look at the two furthest churches, Ephesus and Laodicea. They were also gone. So Satan couldn't be bothered about them. Why? 
because one has lost the first love, the other one has lost his passion. Lukewarm. No first love, no passion. So Satan said, I won. I don't care about you. Do you know a lot of churches today are like that? They are lukewarm. No passion. Couldn't be bothered about extending God's kingdom. Couldn't be bothered about prayer. Couldn't be bothered about anything. They are lukewarm. And Jesus says, I will spill you out of my mouth. So these are churches. Satan couldn't be bothered. But look at the middle too. Smyrna, Philadelphia. They were fighting, fighting. Satan is attacking them. They were persecuted like blazers. They were pierced so hard. But guess what? Praise God. And this is give us hope. In spite of intense attack by the devil, intense persecution, they stood firm. For all the seven churches, Smyrna and Philadelphia, Jesus never rebuked them, but instead commended them. My prayer, my friend, is for your church, for SIBKL, is that in the coming days, in spite of all the challenges that come our way, persecution maybe, maybe stand firm. Will we do that, friend? Maybe be like Smyrna and Philadelphia. Don't cave in. Don't cave in. Remain faithful to the Lord to the very end. I just want to say this. What, what astounds me was Laodicea and, and Ephesus. One lost his love. The other lost his passion. And as I began to do the overview of, of, of the seven churches, the Spirit of God just prompted me. Wing Chi, can you tell my church in Malaysia? These are the two things you can never lose. Because once you lose it, we have lost it. What is it? Our love for God, our love for Jesus, and our passion for His name. Why? Why is both so important? Because you, you can have love without passion, it's not good. What kind of love is that? Well, it is a cold, matter-of-fact love. It's the kind of love that my grandfather would have. Huh? I, uh, I put food on the table. I educate you. Huh? Uh, isn't that enough? You want me to say I love you? Huh? What? what? Uh, that is my show of love. What, huh? So you never see a hug. You never see uh, them saying I love you one because it's love, no passion. But then again, sometimes people, people have passion but no love. That's lust. Passion without love equals lust. But Jesus says no. You cannot lose your first love for me and you must be passionate about my church and my work. Are we? Are you passionate about the work of the Lord? Are you passionate about the glory of His name? Do you really love the Lord? If you look at the seven churches, there are two common denominators that runs through all seven churches. Number one, recurring phrases that are present in all seven churches. And number two, there is a recurring format. So, everybody say recurring phrases. Everybody say recurring format. Thank you. What are the recurring phrases? There are two. This two recurring phrase is present in all seven churches. As if to say, Jesus is saying to all the seven churches, listen to me. Whatever I'm going to show you, these are the two phrases that keeps recurring again and again seven times. The first recurring phrase is this. 
after everything that he's written about that church, Jesus then ends with this. He who has, has an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit says to your church. In other words, hear. Lend me your ears. Pay attention. Don't only hear. Obey. Don't listen to me only. Listen. And I want to believe that as we study the book of Revelation, I told you last week, the Lord spoke to me. Teach it, son, teach it. Because the time is not near. This is the right time. And my prayer to you is that you will hear, pay attention. Don't just hear and forget about it. Jesus says in Revelation chapter 22, verse 7, Behold, I'm coming soon. Blessed is he who keeps the words. Out of, see, it begins with hearing, taking to heart the words, right? And Jesus ends with the same thing. You know, of the seven blessings, uh, two have to do with hearing and heeding, you know. Can you imagine that? So out of the seven beatitudes of Revelation, two has to do with your hearing and your keeping of the word. Isn't it amazing? So what is Jesus trying to say to you? He who has a ear, let him hear and obey what the Spirit says to your church, says to SIBKL. The second recurring phase. Every one of these seven churches, Jesus ends this way. To him who overcomes, I will do this. In other words, Jesus expects Expects us to overcome. Why do you think the Lord writes all this? To warn us, to prepare us, to get us ready so that we, ah, yeah, I know revelations now. No, so that we can get ready to overcome. And God is so good. If you overcome, I will give you this seven times again. Seven blessings of the overcomer. Not not the seven beatitudes, it's different. It's different from the seven beatitudes. These are seven blessings by itself. But if you overcome, I will bless you. But you say, Pastor, overcome what? Huh? Well, we just finished our overcoming series, right? That's how we started the year at SIBKL. Overcoming apathy, overcoming temp uh, suffering, overcoming challenges, overcoming... Uh, I can't remember, la. you just go through it. But if when we overcome all of this, Jesus says... I will bless you. To be very specific, there were three areas that they need to overcome during John's time. During, when John wrote this, they, they had to overcome number one, persecution. Number two, they had to overcome what? False teaching. Why? Because agnosticism was rampant then. False teaching began to creep into the church. And the third thing they need to overcome is ungodliness. That's why Revelation chapter 20, Revelation chapter 21, Revelation chapter 22. At the end of all of this, Jesus gives us three lists of ungodliness, idolaters, sexually immoral, uh, witchcraft, name it. Uh. Why? Uh? To him who overcomes, I will not erase your name from the book of life. I'm going into controversial territory, but I will deal with it when we look in the more detail in the book of Revelation. Let me contextualize these challenges that we must overcome today. Suffering? Not yet. But it will come. Believe me. Given whatever is happening in the West today, especially with the new presidency of the US, a lot of things will change. Laws will be passed. I won't go any further than that. False teaching. 
false teaching has pervaded and invaded into the church of Jesus Christ today. That's why the church is compromised, diluted. Prosperity gospel. Don't talk about suffering. Do you, do you know that there are people who, who have actually left SIBKL to another church because we did not preach blessing enough? Do you know that people who have actually accused us for being not encouraging enough? Hey, pastor, you preach persecution, you preach blessing, you preach suffering. I don't want to hear that. I want to go to that church where they bless me, la, and they tell me I will prosper. La. Be careful. We preach the whole counsel of God. And the third challenge, ungodliness. So my prayer as we go through Revelations, is that we will shun ungodliness. Revelation chapter 22, Jesus says, if you want to be filthy, go ahead and become more filthy. But if you want to become holy, be more holy. In other words, friend, you choose. The second common denominator in all the seven churches are not only these two recurring phrases, but there is a recurring format. And uh, that's how it is. In every one of the seven churches, Jesus, first of all, addressed the church to the angel of the church at Ephesus, to the angel of the church at Thyatira, the address. And then the attributes. Jesus then began to praise the church, commend the church. Everyone has got good things except two. Huh? Sorry. Uh, all have got good things, in effect. All right. Sorry, only two don't have bad things. That's right. Everyone got good one. And then the approval. Jesus says, hey, I, 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 I like it. I, I know your deeds. I know it, you've done well. And then come the accusation. But I've got this against you. It's a good way of, you know, us uh, uh, discipling our, our, our disciple. Don't, don't condemn, condemn, don't, 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 go, 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 don't, la. Praise a bit, la. Say what are good things first, and then, then correct it, la. All right, this is what Jesus does. He approves, and then he accuses. And then not only that, he gives you advice. Come on, man, repent. Do this, come back, come back, return to the Lord. And then the appeal, the appeal. He who has a year, hear, please, la, hear, take me seriously. And then the assurance, if you overcome, I will bless you. So everyone has got this seven format and it's very, very consistent. And I'm one form or another, the people who do this, each letter will probably... Uh, share some of this. Let me read to you as I come to a close of this overview. Revelation chapter 1, verse 17 to verse 20. When I saw him, John fell at his feet as though dead. And then Jesus placed his right hand on me do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. I am the living one. I was dead and behold, I'm alive forever and forever. And I hold the keys of death and Hades. Write therefore, what you have seen, what is now and what will soon take place. The mystery of the seven stars that you saw in my right hand are and of the seven golden lampstands is the seven stars, the seven angels of the seven churches, and the seven lampstands are the seven churches. What was Jesus doing when John saw the vision of Jesus in the seven lampstands? Jesus was actually walking among the lampstands. And how close can you get? When someone walks among you, he's very close to you. Ma. 
So when Jesus walks among your church and my church, what do you think his assessment will be? What do you think he thinks of your church and my church today? My prayer, my friend, even as we start the first letter to the church of Ephesus next week, is that we will be brutally honest with ourselves. Don't feel condemned. That's not the whole purpose of our study, and that's not the whole purpose of why Jesus writes these letters. It applies to us today. But my prayer is that like a good doctor, let us diagnose, let us be honest with our assessment of our health in SIBKL, no condemnation, but let us improve. Let us be honest of our weaknesses and let us finish and finish well. So let me close with the way I closed last week. Key verse, Revelation 14 verse 2. How should we respond? This calls for patient endurance on the part of the saints who obey God's commands and remain faithful to Jesus. So my prayer for you and for me today is this. May we endure patiently. May we always remain faithful to Jesus. Don't be lukewarm. Don't lose our passion. Always make Jesus Christ our first love. Hallelujah. Father, in Jesus' name, I want to pray, God, even as we start our journey to Jesus' letters to the seven churches, help us, Lord, not to just study it in our head, but let us, Father, Lord, Read it, hear it, and take it to heart. Because when we do that, Lord, you promise, Revelation chapter 1, verse 3, we will be blessed. And so, God, I want to pray for all the churches here in Malaysia and for SIBKL, that even as we examine ourselves seven times, week after week, may we come close to you. May we correct ourselves, rectify ourselves in needs be, so that we become strong, excellent, dynamic, influencing the nation, impacting generations for many, many more years to come. Oh, Father, we love you, Father. We don't do it because we, it, it is an expected part of us and we do it for the sake of doing it. We do it because we love you, Lord. We really, really love you. And we are passionate about it, Lord. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on. Let's worship the Lord with this song. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. Tell the Lord we love Him. Shall we do that? Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Let the love of my sweet Savior and flood your heart with joy like a fresh and flowing river that your life will be restored let the worries of tomorrow wash away forevermore And the song that day shall be I love you Lord and I lift my voice to worship you oh my soul
Hallelujah, Father Lord, we truly love you. We love you with all our heart, Lord, with all our strength, with all our mind. We love you, Father Lord. You said to Peter, before you went back to heaven, Peter, do you love me more than all of this? And Peter said, yes, Lord, you know I love you. So Father, may when you ask us individually, whatever your name is, Wing Chi, do you love me more than these? S-I-B-K-L, do you love me more than these? Father, may our answer and our response to you be, yes, Lord, you know all things. You know we love you. And so, God, I want to pray today, not only for S-I-B-K-L, but for all the churches that are represented and listening to this broadcast. May we take you seriously, Father Lord. May we, Father Lord, as we journey through the seven letters and later on, Lord, to the study of Revelation, may we draw closer to you, Father Lord. May we always endure patiently, persevere, and always remain faithful to the very end. And so, Father, this is my prayer, my prayer to all of us, Father. And God, I want to bless every family once again. I want to pray for your protection. Put a firewall, put a firewall around every loved one, every family of ours. Some of them are not here with us, wherever they are, whether in Australia, United States, Europe or UK. Father, protect them from the virus. Protect them, Father Lord. Oh God, we know that you're always there for us, God. So God, I want to pray today for every family today, every family represented, every church represented that we will remain strong and we will overcome because together we overcome. Together we 
overcome. Thank you, Jesus. And so may the Lord bless you and keep you this day. May the Lord make His face always to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn His face, His wonderful face, towards every one of us and always grant us shalom. In Jesus' precious name I pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful week. Next week, we begin with a letter to the Church of Ephesus. Thank you for joining us for service today. If you would like someone to pray for you, head over to the link and our pastors and leaders would love to pray and connect with you. If you would like to give, you can go to this giving link and all the giving details will be there for you. Thank you for sowing into God's kingdom this season. You are a blessing. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you can stay connected for the latest content. Follow us on our social media platforms at SIBKL Church on Facebook and Instagram. You can also visit our website at sibkl.org.my for more info about our church. Stay updated on the latest sermons on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Hi everyone! Would you like to get to know SIBKL a little bit more? If you've ever had such questions like, how can I join a cell group? How can I serve in a ministry? How can I be discipled? How can I be a member? How can I join one of our SIBKL events? Or any other questions, then I invite you to click on the link below and we will connect with each other via WhatsApp. One of our Connect leaders will reach out to you. We would love to connect with you, so we invite you to connect with us. God bless. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above. Heavenly host, praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Praise God, praise God, praise God. The attributes of Jesus, the work and ministry of Christ, the passion of Jesus, on the cross, it is finished. In this Lent season, let's take some time together to journey through a five-week devotional at 10 p.m. weeknights for 10 minutes as we reflect on the life of Jesus, our overcomer. You're also invited to join us for our Tuesday night prayer altars from 8.30 to 9.30 p.m. on Zoom as we look to Jesus and remember His work on the cross throughout this Lent period. Church, are you ready to praise Him today? Come on, hey! Come on, put your hands like this. Come on, hey! I wanna give you one new reason and hold nothing in reason. No matter, no matter how I'm feeling, I still believe it's one new reason. Oh my praise, oh my praise, oh belongs to you, belongs to you. Oh my praise belongs to you. Amen. Belongs to you. Come on, church, are you ready? Let's shout it out. Shout
out into the world, you're the greatest. Sing it till it's heard, you're the greatest. It's what you deserve, you're the greatest. Jesus, I will lift your name. I, oh Jesus, come on, wanna give you what you deserve. And hold nothing in reason. No matter what, no matter how I'm feeling. Believe is what you deserve. Come on, all my praise, my praise, oh, belongs to you. All my praise belongs to you. All my praise, amen, belongs to you. Come on, church, are you ready? Oh, shout it to the world. The attributes of Jesus, the work and ministry of Christ, the passion of Jesus. On the cross, it is finished. In this Lent season, let's take some time together to journey through a five-week devotional at 10 p.m. weeknights for 10 minutes as we reflect on the life of Jesus, our Overcomer. You're also invited to join us for our Tuesday night prayer altars from 8.30 to 9.30 p.m. on Zoom as we look to Jesus and remember His work on the cross throughout this Lent period. attributes of Jesus, the work and ministry of Christ, the passion of Jesus, on the cross, it is finished. In this Lent season, let's take some time together to journey through a five-week devotional at 10 p.m. weeknights for 10 minutes as we reflect on the life of Jesus, our Overcomer. You're also invited to join us for our Tuesday night prayer altars from 8.30 to 9.30 p.m. on Zoom as we look to Jesus and remember His work on the cross throughout this Lent period.
of Jesus, the work and ministry of Christ, the passion of Jesus, on the cross, it is finished. In this Lent season, let's take some time together to journey through a five-week devotional at 10pm weeknights for 10 minutes as we reflect on the life of Jesus, our overcomer. You're also invited to join us for our Tuesday night prayer altars from 8.30 to 9.30pm on Zoom as we look to Jesus and remember His work on the cross throughout this Lent period. In every season, your grace has been enough. Attributes of Jesus, the work and ministry of Christ, the passion of Jesus, on the cross, it is finished. In this Lent season, let's take some time together to journey through a five-week devotional at 10pm weeknights for 10 minutes as we reflect on the life of Jesus, our overcomer. You're also invited to join us for our Tuesday night prayer altars from 8.30 to 9.30pm on Zoom 
as we look to Jesus and remember His work on the cross throughout this Lent period. Today we fix our eyes on you. We worship you. We say, God, you are so worthy. Oh Lord, you are so worthy of all our praise and adoration, God. Jesus, we worship you today. Thank you. Worthy of every song we could ever sing. Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you Jesus, the name above every other name Jesus, the only one ever sing, worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. 